real estate price factors in the Philippines. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm uh, going to show you some historical information, uh, talk about many of the many, many of the various factors that uh, result in pricing here in the Philippines. If you are watching this video, you are probably interested. Uh, many of you will be interested in buying property or renting property hill here. And uh, uh, there will be a few people commenting, never buy property in a foreign country. And uh, the fact of the matter is thousands, if not probably tens of thousands of foreigners from around the world are going to buy property in the Philippines over the years. And many have. Many have had very good uh, experience with it. Some have had some bad experiences. We'll get into some of that information as well a little later. Prices have been fluctuating, especially uh, early 2020 when they, the governments locked down uh, all travel pretty much. And uh, prices dropped off the, uh, off the cliff there for a while. Prior to the year 2020, uh, when governments started uh, locking down, uh, shutting down transportation internationally, uh, locking people into their houses, basically, property pi prices had been rising because there was a, a great demand, actually, for uh, properties here in many of the cities and areas of the Philippines. When it became apparent that uh, governments were going to start uh, instituting uh, travel restrictions and such, millions of foreigners here in the Philippines, uh, more likely tens of millions of foreigners, Kore Koreans, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Westerners from all over the world, and, and other people from other parts of the world left the Philippines, and uh, therefore they left tens of millions of vacancies condominiums, hotel rooms, resort rooms, uh, vacant. So where there was once demand, uh, that pretty much fell right off the, the cliff. At the present time, in the middle of uh, 2023, the information that I've read is that the tourist arrivals, international tourist arrivals, is about half of what it was in uh, 2019. Therefore, you still have... Uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of resort rooms, condo rooms, hotel rooms uh, still vacant as they're, uh, even though a lot of the builders slowed down their building during the, during the lockdowns, uh, there, are, there are tens of thousands of new units and square, square meters of space coming, uh, coming open uh, this year, next year, and the following years. I have observed uh, uh, several things uh, searching the various real estate sites and listening to uh, some of the experts in the real estate industry, understanding, of, of course, that uh, where you're getting your information, people in the real estate in industry, of course, um, you know, oftentimes uh, perception is reality and they want to, to talk very positively about what's going on. Uh, I, I try to take an even-handed approach, try to look at the, the facts, and uh, so that's what I'm going to be presenting here. Um, there, are, uh, there are some landlords, property owners, who are trying to raise their prices to pre-pandemic levels, even above those levels. Uh, there are others who are motivated for a number of reasons. They they have, have not rented their units for three years, basically. They've been sitting vacant, and they're willing to uh, discount those units in order to, to rent them out and or sell them. Developers have been encouraged uh, by some in the real estate industry to offer um, various uh, incentives to buy. For instance, uh, better payment options, easier payment options, uh, uh, giving away uh, furnishings, different things to entice people to buy. Some developers are doing much better than others in moving their properties, and they are they're better at marketing, and, and they, they've got uh, contacts, people, OFWs, Overseas Filipino Workers, for instance, they can contact. Or, and they some even send uh, salespeople off to other, other countries to, uh, to promote their projects, off to the U.S., off to... The Middle East, for instance, where, where many Filipinos work, uh, off to other Asian countries as well. 
what are other factors that may affect uh, prices here in in the real estate industry in the Philippines? Um, I have read uh, in, in the last month or two that uh, Chinese in particular have been because they don't want those with money don't want to get stuck locked down in China again. Uh, is that uh, many of them are are looking for properties in Thailand? That's what I've read. Now, are they also doing that in the Philippines? I suspect that uh, there are some that are looking for property in the Philippines as well, and not only not only Chinese, but people around the world. As the price prices, inflation, the cost of living all over the world has gone up, become uh, very unbearable in many parts of the world and hard to handle. I know a couple expats that have moved here for that reason. Uh, do they have money? But do they have money uh, to purchase? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, if they sold, were able to sell their properties in uh, back in their old country. Uh, that is, uh, those are potential uh, new owners and or renters here in the Philippines. But actually, I've not seen that. There are there are a number of hotels that uh, uh, tend to have a high occupancy, and they are uh, like Quest Hotel here in Cebu City, and I think probably Radisson Blue uh, seem to get some. So people who have money have a reasonable amount of money. Uh, although you know, like Quest, you can get a pretty good deal at, at times there. Um, more people coming here. But as I walk around and inquire at different hotels, condos, and ask about the vacancy rates, generally speaking, most places uh, still have very, very high vacancy rates. Uh, they're doing a little bit of business, some of them in, with Airbnb, uh, but uh, you aren't getting the long-term rentals in there is what I keep hearing. So the point being, there are still lots of options. There's a lot, lots of vacancies. There, are, there are options. There are those who are going to hold the line and try to get top dollar. There are those who will negotiate uh, a good deal for you. So it just depends upon what you're looking at. A little later in this video, I'll go over uh, the various sectors, various types of housing, and price increases by different regions of the Philippines as well. But first of all, I, I did a lot of research, and uh, inflation, of course, is a big factor. Transportation costs, fuel costs, a lot of the building materials come in from or uh, are imported from other countries. Uh, so you have those costs driving up the cost of building, of course. What is a POGO, and what does it have to do with real estate in the Philippines? Uh, a POGO is a Philippine offshore gaming operator, and they're online gaming firms operate in the Philippines but cater to customers outside of the country, primarily uh, Chinese. Ch uh, gambling is illegal in China, so they come up, they set up uh, operations here, legal and illegal. And there has been a big push over the years, especially the last couple of years, to uh, by some to to outlaw pogos to get rid of them all and especially the illegal ones um, I, I watched a video by one real estate guy and he said well they they take up hundreds of thousands of space in office space they uh, they spend money contribute X number of millions of pesos uh, into the economy and the people who work in those places I think uh, gosh what I read uh, Hundreds of thousands of, of people, many of, the, many of them Chinese, but also Filipinos. The mo most of the employees are Chinese, some legal, some not, not, not illegal, some here not legally, and uh, so that's an issue. But the point I'm making is that they take up office space and they also take up a lot of residential space. Those tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people uh, take up. Uh, take up residential space, and they were taking up a, a lot of condominium space. Um, anyway, as as more and more of those, I think, uh, left the country, were either shut down and deported, or or were shut down for various reasons because they weren't paying proper taxes, uh, weren't uh, registered legally. Um, is that? They, they left a lot of vacancies. Now, big percentage of that is in the Manila area, but uh, I'm aware of some that was uh, here in the in the Philippines or not Philippines here in Cebu City. 
uh, even over on Matcan Island. I, I think one large building over there was primarily a, a pogo type operation. I, I, I went out with a girl a couple times that worked in one of those places. And she finally quit. She said, I was discriminated against, even though I spoke Mandarin very well. Uh, so she left there, but she told me a little bit about the operation. So not only don't you have the tourists and expats back here uh, like they were in 2019, but you have also gotten rid of uh, perhaps uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, POGO employees. Another factor on the demand side are OFWs, which are overseas Filipino workers. There are, uh, I think, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands, probably millions of Filipinos who go overseas to make much more uh, higher wages overseas as, as, as teachers, as uh, medical, nurses, doctors and uh, in, in many different professions in, in the USA, around the world, in the Middle East, uh, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, all over Asia, and, and uh, I think Germany, I read they're looking for 50,000 Filipino teachers. China's looking for uh, tens of thousands uh, as well, teachers. And they go overseas uh, for nurses as well, nurses and uh, many other uh, many other uh, occupations. I think Filipinos make up the vast majority of merit, what do you call them, maritime workers, maritimers out there on the ships around the world. And uh, in general, they are not paid very well is what I have read. I, I watch a site called What's Going On? Let's see, What's Going On in Shipping? Something like that. And he puts out a lot of information about the, the shipping news and logistics. Anyway, they make remittant, remittances on a regular basis, uh, billions of U.S. dollars uh, each year, I believe, back to the, their families in the U.S., uh, into their bank accounts that they uh, plan on uh, retiring on, on investing, starting businesses, whatever, uh, at some point in time. So, and, and there are real estate companies that reach out to those people overseas, wherever they're at, and they, they send sales reps out there to, uh, to pitch their properties. Uh, so that is, a, that is a huge number of people that are on the demand side here. And also on the dem demand side, there's other Filipinos. There's lots of money in the Philippines, uh, believe it or not. I mean, there are many poor people, but there, there are many successful people as well who have money and uh, plan to buy properties. And foreigners, uh, from all over the world who have money as well and and want to uh, buy into this buy in someplace overseas their their cost of living in their own country is very 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 high uh, if they have properties there they can sell their property and have cash in high hand come to the philippines or some other uh, retirement destination and uh, buy the the property of their dreams hopefully be sure to that you are dealing with reputable people. I've uh, heard some horror stories as well. Uh, JR of JRC Visa Consultancy, they've got a real estate division as well. And he is uh, an, an appraiser and a broker, and he's got uh, two lawyers on his staff, and they can help you in uh, looking over all the legal documents, make sure everything is uh, copacetic as well. I am familiar with a couple of cases. Uh, this is where Filipinos put money down on house and lot, for instance. And they've been paying for quite a number of years. They've got equity in their project and still not one house has been built on the property. One, one case is up in uh, Laloan, I believe, north of Cebu City. And uh, they're, they're trying, they want to get their money back, of course, and nobody can find the developer. Who could imagine that? I went with uh, somebody to go look at some properties up, up in the mountains uh, up above Karkar, I think one of those cities south of Cebu City. And uh, just a big pasture, open, open, open land up there. Somebody, somebody owned, they said, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna develop, develop this area. And, and uh, they're selling houses and lots. And my thinking was, you know, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But uh, my thinking was it'll be 
uh, <laughs> perhaps many years or decades before anything is built up there, possibly. Although the population of the Philippines, I, I just saw some information, they're about uh, 113 million now. In five years, they're projected to be 119 million people population here in the Philippines. So that's uh, that's a chunk of more people who are going to need places to live. So perhaps, perhaps if those people uh, selling those developments still have the money, they haven't spent it. They actually developed the properties. I think there are there's some really nice developments around the uh, Philippines by reputable developers, and uh, there are others. Uh, you know, I had a I, I had a uh, subscriber a while back. Uh, I think he emailed me and he said, "Oh, this is this deal rent uh, rent to own type deal. It looks like there's there's no way this could go wrong. Such a good deal. And I don't know. Maybe if it's such a good deal, too good to be true. Perhaps it is." I'm going to get it into some pricing and graph information here shortly, but first I want to say, uh, you know, find find your match. Uh, you need to do your dil due diligence. Know what your uh, know what your budget is, your capabilities are, your your income and uh, expenses, uh, what you can afford, and uh, you need to find something that uh, will make you happy, hopefully, and not uh, sorry in the end. Um, whether it's a condominium, whether you're going to build a house, buy a house, you, you can own property here, you cannot own the land. You can lease the land, basically. As a foreigner, and I think much the same is, is true, I think even Vietnamese are not allowed to own the land. I think they've got to lease it from the government. Thailand, I'm not uh, sure. I'd, I'd heard that you cannot own the land there as well. Not absolutely positive of the details. Anyway, let's get into this uh, this data here. Some of you will find very interesting. Banco Central Pilipina puts out a lot of data. Uh, they've been doing it, I think, since 2016. And there are a number of graphs. Uh, and they've, they've got some over on their site. And uh, this particular site, uh, BW, which is Business World, I think it's owned by the Inquirer Newspaper Group, uh, puts out a nice, uh, one of the better graphs, I would say, residential property price increase in quarter four. And anyway, they break it down here, over here on the left, uh, down here on the lower right with these these columns. Philippines, this includes NCR, the National Capital Region, the Manila area, basically. Um, and then they break it down with just the NCR, the Capital Region, and they break it down by the type of housing as well all housing types, single, detached, attached houses, duplexes, townhouses, and condominiums. And many of you, I believe, are probably more interested in, uh, you know, all the Philippines, including everything, doesn't tell you that much. National Capital Region, if you live in that area, that's interesting. Areas outside of the National Capital Region uh, is more interested to many of you. So anyway, this is all housing types. There again, not that, uh, not that the information is, probably doesn't cover your particular situation. Uh, single detached and attached houses. And uh, so they dropped 8% on end. And these, these are based on loans. So there's an awful lot of real estate that takes place cash. And so it doesn't include that. So it doesn't give you the full picture of what's going on out there. Uh, but it does give you a picture of, of uh, what, the loan situation is for real estate anyway. Duplexes, uh, they've gone up substantially, 46. <clears throat> they've gone up substantially, year on year, I guess. Uh, townhouses were the ones that dropped off here after after making a, after having a uh, increase earlier. Uh, they dropped off 20% and then 12%. Condominiums over here also, you've seen they've increased in prices. And this chart here is the residential real estate price index as put out by uh, the national government. And uh, you, rapid, rapid, rapid increases. Look at this, 26.6% um, up until the first quarter of 2020 when uh, the government uh, did all their lockdowns, travel restrictions, and uh, dropped off the cliff basically, and uh, 
hung there a while because the first the, the first several months there was a lot of talk about well this is enough we need to open back up we're we're going to recover now and then uh, the lockdowns got deeper the the restrictions become become more draconian and so uh, things dropped way off uh, minus nine and a half percent about and then uh, it's interesting that they according to this information they picked back up why did they pick back up partly because there were a lot of motivated sellers, uh, developers and uh, people who had bought in, uh, lo- who lost their job, lost their livelihood, they are motivated to buy. You had other people with cash looking to invest. And uh, so you saw prices uh, prices rise as there, in some areas, some areas, not all, there was a bit of a bidding war perhaps. Not sure if I'm accurate on that or not. Uh, but anyway, it stayed kind of steady, and now we're at 7.7% at the end of uh, uh, 2022. Now I'm going to end this video uh, talking just a little bit about rents and, and my experience here uh, recently, at least. And uh, it's worth its own video, and, and I'll do a separate video about that uh, in, in the coming weeks, I think. Um, I have... I have uh, something I'm interested in, rents. I've moved to six different condominiums in the seven plus years I've been here. And uh, do a lot of real estate videos, as many of you know. I've got dozens and dozens and dozens of of videos about condominiums, cost of living, uh, where I go and take videos of the units. Um, I have have noticed, and I've talked to real estate agents, many who I've met over the years, and uh, they've shown me various units, and, and they're asking maybe for a one-bedroom. Uh, for, I looked at a one-bedroom in an IT park not too long ago, and uh, they're asking 35,000 pesos. And uh, not very well furnished, um, adequate, you know, minimal, minimal furnishings. And, you know, I did, I did additional research, and I was, I was a little bit shocked. One bedroom for 35,000. Prior to the pandemic, that'd probably be closer to thirty thousand. Uh, anyway, I think a lot of people depends on when when these owners bought in. If they bought in at at the most expensive end of the market, for instance, twenty nineteen when prices were rising, they bought in. Well, they need to get more for that unit if they're going to make any money. Uh, but like I told the like I told the real estate agent, you know, if if they're not competitive, you know. Commission and, and sales and, and rental, 100% of nothing is, is nothing. You know, if, you, if you're competitive with other places, and I've, I have seen other places, much better furnishings uh, for 30000 in the same in the same building, basically. So as I've said before, there are, there are many different types of renters, buyers, and the, those who have a, a big budget and uh, the cost isn't, nearly as important as as the location amenities feeling comfortable uh whatever they're they're comfortable with the with the place with the with the landlord and fine i'll pay 35 or 60 or a hundred thousand whatever whatever they want uh they're the group that most of us are in we're uh middle income i guess you'd call us and we need to be a little more careful with how we spend our money. Uh, we could live comfortably here, but we could go over budget very easily, very quickly. And then there's a third group, and really more groups than that, but a third group who is very tight budget and really needs to look for the, uh, for the bottom dollar on their rentals and other expenses as well. I regularly look online and, and do research about uh, rentals and sales prices and various things. And uh, what I found is that there are certain owners of properties who are, in fact, uh, they're, they're trying to get more than what the prices were uh, before this huge crisis that started in early 2020, uh, perhaps trying to make up for uh, all the losses they've had over these last three years, not renting or being able to sell their properties, or giving them them some leeway. They, they uh, start with a high price, and then it gives them uh, some room to negotiate down with somebody and say, "Oh, I'm giving you, I'm going to give you a deal," type thing. And then there's uh, 
there are a lot of properties out there who they are, I mean, they're, they're listing their properties lower because they want to move that property. I've had a couple of uh, expats who I've met, a couple friends who come here off and on, and uh, they were able to rent properties uh, even short term. Uh, because uh, without without the six month lease, one one year lease, because the people said we haven't we haven't been able to rent our property out for three years. So yes, okay, we'll do it month to month. So it comes down to how hard do you want to look? How how long do you want to uh, look uh, to get what you want in the price range that you want? There are options out there. So anyway, looking forward to your comments. That's enough for today, and I'll see you next time.